my sweet. Rain shows a table in the corner. A crisply dressed man, probably the instructor, sat in a cushioned chair at the front of the room. His boss had requested he attend the seminar. Starr felt he needed to improve his communication skills and be more social. Problem was, he had no interest in making friends. He valued privacy and solitude. As the room filled with more people, Rain used the complimentary pen and doodled on the back of his folder. He sketched the face of the only person he'd ever loved. His mother. Thin lips. Sunken cheeks. Pale complexion. The cancer had stolen the sparkle in her eyes and the warmth of her skin. He scowled at his depiction of his sickly mother. Tightening his grip, he stabbed the pen into the folder and scribbled over the drawing. To clear his mind, he approached a nearby water cooler and poured himself a cup. He noticed a young woman entering the room. Rain shook his head. Too fat. Another woman entered. Too old. The well-dressed man stood and stepped behind a wooden pedestal. Welcome to successful communications in the workplace. I'm Lorenzo Parker and I'll be your instructor for the next three days. Working amicably and effectively with others can be one of the most challenging aspects of your job. A woman with shoulder-length brown hair entered the room. Especially if you work with someone who consistently arrives late. She gave the class and instructor an apologetic grin and took a seat near the front of the room. He gave her a smile and turned his focus back to the room. Inside your folder, you'll find a stack of papers, the first being a questionnaire. I'll give you 20 minutes to complete it. And the clock starts now. Rain's focus drifted to the woman who'd arrived late. Her name was Jewel Albright. And she had made the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade a living hell. After searching for years, a stroke of dumb chance had brought her to him. He should buy a lottery ticket. My sweet. Four days, and nothing. Cam hadn't heard from or seen Jags. What if he was sick? Had he been in a car accident? Cam crossed the cavernous living room into the kitchen. He washed his hands and dried them on his jeans. Pressing his palms on the yellow cracked counter, he hung his head. <sighs> Until now, 
He hadn't realized how much he took Jag's visits and phone calls for granted. Damn it. As he slid his phone from his pocket and dialed Jag's number, he heard the unmistakable rumble of Jag's loud exhaust. Cam leaned back, his ankles crossed, and his hands gripping the edge of the counter behind him. You need a life too. Get me one. A life or a beer? Never had a life. Just need a beer. Sit. We need to talk. I hate when you say that. What? That dreaded four-letter word? Talk. Shouldn't you be at work? I'm taking a lunch. Cam pulled a foil-topped dish from the refrigerator. Is that the spicy chicken and sausage casserole? Meatloaf. Fantastic. Talk. I think we should hire a visiting nurse to help you with gramps. <sighs> no. His mind slips further every day. Things you, you would never suspect. Tip his whole world upside down. And a stranger wouldn't know how to deal. Like what? A game of checkers will bring him to tears. And the only thing that will help is a shot of Glenn Levitt. I thought he used to love to play checkers with me, Ma. Yep. He breaks down every time he's reminded of her. A year after she and Mom disappeared, I took down all of her photographs and I boxed up her clothes. He still breaks down. Just not as often. You've lost more weight. Can't shake the nightmarish visions. I know it's something to do with me, Ma, and Mom's disappearance. Every time the vision comes close to conclusion, I black out. But I'm getting closer to figuring it out. I think two people were involved. As soon as I begin to feel me, Ma's, and Mom's suffering, I, I snap out of it and then... Let's not do this. I prefer you conscious and alert, not comatose. You're right. Where were we? Checkers. Right. We'll make sure they know not to play checkers with them. Hmm. What happens when he starts quoting lines from Richard III? Or starts singing Chances Are? I'll tell you what will happen. They'll try to admit him into the loony bin. Which I will never let happen. Besides, we can't afford it. And I'm managing fine on my own. He's not even your grandfather. I can't believe I just said that. I'm sorry. Years ago, the marriage between Cam's mother and Jag's father melded their families. Biologically, Gramps and Jag's were in no relation to Cam, but Cam loved them like family. Until now, he thought the feeling was mutual. Neither can I. You know that's not what I meant. You could have called. You didn't have to drive all the way over here. You're ten minutes from work. And if I called, I'd be eating a microwaved hamburger and cold french fries in the cafeteria right now. Why a visiting nurse when I'm handling things fine on my own? The plan was to get you a life other than Gramps. You never leave here. You don't work. You don't play. You don't date. You know why I don't date. Yes, well, that's a fight for another day. Today, I just want you to have a beer with me. We are having a beer. I was thinking of a place with pool tables, country music, and scantily clad ladies. A place that smells like stale beer and cigarettes. Not old people funk. I don't smell anything. Yeah, we gotta get you out of here. I gotta get back to work.
Jags. Yeah? I mean it. No visiting nurse. See you at six. Fuck! Four hours passed, and he hadn't heard a word the instructor said. His mind raced with visions of all the ways he planned to fuck her. Usually, he kept a woman for a month or so. before handing what was left of her to his friend Kip. But Jewel was different. He may keep her for a while and make Kip wait. Assorted breads, deli meats, and cheeses were brought in for lunch. Rain watched Jewel fix herself a plate when she passed him on her way back to her seat. Anybody ever tell you it's rude to stare? I thought I recognized you. <laughs> I'm certain we never met. No, I guess not. The smirk on her face mirrored the expression she gave him long ago. The day the bullies of the school beat him, stripped him nude, and tied him to the flagpole. Jewel was the first to walk by, probably because her boyfriend A.J. had bragged about their misdeed. When everyone else just chanced a brief look, she stopped, pointed at his penis, and laughed. <laughs> Using a black sharpie, Jewel drew a down arrow on his stomach. Above the arrow, she wrote, Supersize me. <laughs> After the sixth grade, Jewel and her family moved away and he hadn't seen her since. Not until today, that is. And as luck would have it, she didn't recognize him. AJ was Rain's major pain in the ass. The leader of the Hell Pack had made Rain's life miserable right up until the day Rain moved and transferred to Trenton High. Rain waited for everyone to get their food before approaching the long table. Bypassing the meats and cheeses, he filled his plate with three mini chocolate cupcakes, two peanut butter cookies, and one sugar cookie then carried his plate to his seat. His hand hovered over a peanut butter cookie, then glided over a chocolate mini cupcake. Smiling, he selected the sugar cookie and took a bite. The sweet goodness overloaded his sensitive taste buds. My... Sweet. <sighs> My sweet, 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 sweet. Due to his inability 
to discipline children. Beyond, his life is a blank canvas. We don't know what motivated him. To Cam brushed the blue drapes aside and peered out the bay window. Jags waved as he circled his truck and approached the door. Fuck! Which was an ecological disaster for farmers in northeastern America. Young first found He crouched beside the recliner and rubbed Gramps' balding head. Cam, try again. Gramps rubbed his eyes and stretched. He frowned. AJ? Nope. Jags! Gramps opened his arms and they embraced. About planting and harvesting. Cam entered the kitchen. Jags followed. Cam leaned against the counter and crossed his arms. Why you back? Cheers. So, it's six. What are you doing here? Tilly. Hello. Please, come in. Cam, I believe you know Tilly. She's a nurse. Tilly sat at one of the rusted metal chairs surrounding the card table. She slid a folder from under her arm. Cam didn't much like all that voodoo crap, but on the rare occasion, it did have its advantages. Jag's empathetic abilities trumped any reference she could produce. If Jags trusted her, so would he. From what Jack tells me about Gramps, I think he and I will get along quite well. I just happen to love the chances are. She'll come every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. On whose dime? Mine. She's going to sit with him, make sure he doesn't burn down the house, and anything else you need. You just have to let her know. She'll be here from 6 to 8. And what do you know? Today's Wednesday, and it's 5.57. Now let's go get drunk. Where are my manners? Nice to see you again. He gripped Tilly's hand. Cam bopped Jags on the head. Do you have to do that with everybody? Jags let go of her hand and stepped backwards. Please, God, no. Tears streamed down his cheeks, curling his fingers in front of his lips. He bit onto his knuckle. What did you see? I'm so sorry. Tilly tucked a lock of her short blonde hair behind her ear. I can handle it. Tell me. I won't. Red, swollen eyes narrowed on her. Does something terrible happen to me or Nate? Jags shook his head. The triplets? Who are the triplets? Nate's younger brothers. I won't. Does something happen to the triplets? I won't. Nate's sister? My sister? My parents? I won't. Nate's parents? She gripped his arms and shook him. Ugh! Tell me, damn it! I won't. <sighs> when she glanced towards Cam, he offered her a small smile. He felt for her, but Cam was used to Jag's stubbornness. Jags rarely revealed what he saw in his visions, and nobody knew why. Just the way he'd always been. We'll go have a beer. Nodding, Jags lifted his shirt and wiped his tears. Tilly, got some things to go over with you. He picked up the notebook where he had jotted down Gramps' quirks and how to deal with them. He also listed Gramps' medications, when and how to administer, and the possible side effects. Cam noticed Jags glancing at his watch. He'd grown impatient, but 
Cam didn't give a shit. Jags probably thought he was overprotective when it came to Gramps. And maybe he was, but he had no plans on changing. Let's go. Jags turned and went back to the house. He cracked the door and peeked his head inside. The vision had nothing to do with any of your or Nate's living relatives. I'm sorry I can't tell you more, but does knowing that much make you feel better? I suppose. The future cannot be changed. Worrying about it only wastes energy and time. I understand, but it'll be hard not to think about it. Can you at least promise that you'll try? Sure thing.